What is TWS podcast uh, episode whatever? Who cares at this point? Oh. <laughs> the rants of the vindicated. It's my podcast. And I do what I want to. People, listen. Word, is it still alive? It's not working for me, Red Dive. We gonna keep going. I know I changed my voice at work. Bars on the radio. Oh, what is TWS podcast? Well, I'm ready. I feel like the end is staring at my watch, and I'm feeling so new school. Suicide attempts. How many tries to take? Damn, 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 ain't ready they ain't never been ready they ain't never gonna be ready it's another episode of the what is tws podcast uh as always i am your boy J. flan and joining me uh through the miracle of uh the interwebs is the boy rich nerd yo and uh, we are the white pan society and we somewhere in the hundreds with this episode um i don't know we're just going i think we're just going to relax and chill for this episode we're gonna go through uh, Kanye took over the last episode, so we didn't get to touch on some of the dumb shit going on in the world. And the next episode, I want to set up for like an epic uh, debate against. Um, did we say we did we call it Cree on the last? Yeah, we called it Cree yeah. last time. See, see, against the uh, the the woman who the self proclaimed woman that makes sex unsexy. We're gonna have a uh, what I think might be an epic like. Like I had to text her and make sure that we could talk about this and still be cool. Like that's how, that's how deep I expect us to get on this this next episode. So for this episode, I wanted to chill, um, talk about shit we ain't get a chance to talk about and won't get a chance to talk about. Uh, let's start out, of course, with as always recognizing the situation in Flint. We talking about a, you know, a, a major city in the United States of America. That is four years plus without clean water. These are tax paying, water bill paying citizens uh, that don't have access to clean water. Uh, and the government is trying to cut off um, some of the programs that were bringing them bottled water. So I'm asking people to please uh, check out my man Tavares Taylor at ttcharities.org. Um, the last time I checked, which was probably a month ago, so I know they've done. Uh, more since then, but they have provided 14,000 gallons of uh, clean bottled water to the residents of Flint, <coughs> Michigan. So, uh, you know, I want us to be our brother's keeper, uh, try to take care of our own because it seems like nobody else is willing to. So please uh, do whatever you can to support TT Charities, um, even if it's just, you know, sharing or reposting or, you know, telling your friends about it. But yeah, check out the website. If you can donate, please do. If you can spread the word, that's just as good. And uh, yeah, let's take care of our folks. This is crazy. Four years plus, no clean water. That's like yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy. All right. So enough with the serious shit. Um, Rich, I got an idea. So the wife is doing. So you know how they, they these diets are like every other day. It's a new diet, right? And so yeah. um, Hamps has picked up a new one. Well, not a new one. I guess other people are doing. But she on keto. Have you tried keto? No, I haven't tried that one yeah. yet. I don't even know what, like, the restrictions are, but she's doing the keto joint. So it got me to thinking, like, these things are such fads, and people jump on them so quickly that you just need to come up with a concept, you know, and then, like, you know, sell it for as long as you can and then fall back. So I think TWS should go ahead and start pushing the Kanye diet. <laughs> <clears throat> So here's, here's how the Kanye diet works, Rich. It's real simple. Anybody can do it. You don't have to change your exercise routine, none of that. All you simply have to do is for two meals a day, listen to Kanye interviews until you get nauseated and lose your appetite and watch the pounds <laughs> fall off. Nigga, I'm fall trying off. to tell you. I'm trying to tell you it will work. You don't need lipo. You ain't got Kanye money to get the lipo. All you got to do is listen to him speak for long enough and all of a sudden, you'll notice you, you don't even want food. Food don't even sound appetizing. This nigga has turned your stomach. That that that, that may work. That may work. Uh, speaking of Kanye, I don't want to go off on him real quick, but guess who came to his defense? Uh, what Stacey dumbass? Dash. Oh yeah. Stacey Dash. <laughs> and, and you know what? I was thinking about that. Like, like when Kanye said what he said, and I really felt like like people was like falling over themselves to try to to try to make. Uh, sense of it to try to you know justify it for him like he wasn't even providing these justifications like we was just going on our way to figure out a way that it somehow made sense because we wanted to 
We ain't want to let go of Kanye. Yeah, save face for Kanye. Same, save face for him. It, that, that thought crossed my mind. Like, if Stacey Dash had said this, wouldn't Ned nigga be trying to nope. be trying to fix this for her? They be like, nigga, we wrote her off last year. Like, why, why, are we, why is she still talking? Somebody exactly. take her mic away. Huh? Why is she still talking? But now she out here the defending the dude. That's so right. I don't know. Like, does that change anything? Like Kanye need to call her up. Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, <laughs> you are not helping. Yeah, you, nah. He gonna she gonna ruin it. You gonna get me killed enough. in these streets. Mm-hmm. But yeah, man. Kanye died. You know, we gonna we gonna get some literature together. Uh, put some seminars. You know, we may package up the videos for you. Send you your your daily dose of Kanye. Two meals, two meals a day. Just watch the Kanye videos and watch the panels fall off. Dopeness. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, people people upset about it. This is the last Kanye thing. He did another collaboration that came out in uh in Europe. Uh, nobody showed up at the pop up shop. Nobody bought anything. Uh, they had to shut the thing down. Uh, three hours after open, and uh, just uh, they uh, issued a what is it a statement or whatever, and they just canceled the uh, collaboration. Yeah, man. Nobody <clears throat> wanted. It. I ain't I ain't following it at this point, like. I think I, I think I said my piece on the last episode. Yep. I never really, I won't say I never got it because there was a time where I was like, yeah, Kanye is is dope as fuck, and yeah, I had like so much hope for what Kanye was gonna do for the game, and then I, I don't know if I think he had traumatic traumatic things happen to him, and didn't really get the help he needed, and and it's I just you know, compounded. Yeah, we talking yeah. about we can't afford to lose Kanye. I th- we, I think we lost him a long time ago, and uh, and now it's, it's too late. But yeah, I don't even want to go down that road. This week, what's been happening with me this week? So yesterday was Mother's Day. Um, shout out to all the mothers. Sorry we didn't do like a special Mother's Day episode, but you know I was busy like actually celebrating Mother's Day with uh, the mother of my children. Um, I made flan cakes, by the way. Pause, Rich. Sidebar, sa- 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 sidebar. Did you just say children, like in plural? That got something you want to Oh, tell yeah, us? my bad, my bad. That's just... Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. The mother of my child. Bag. Nah, nah, son. I, I, I knew it, <laughs> nah, Hips. son. I knew it. No, nah, son. <laughs> Don't put that on me, son, son. No, no. <laughs> that's that's that uh, that's that Ryan life. I ain't ready for that. <laughs> I ain't ready for that yet. But now, nah, uh, we did the Mother's Day thing. And I tried to give her a break yesterday, uh, you know, from just being... A mom, cause I swear to God, Rich, and we was talking about this on I Am the other day. It it literally sounded like a torture chamber, like in my house. Like it sounded like some sick, sadistic things was going on in this house. I don't know what it is. Like maybe y'all can explain it to me, black mothers. Like is it? Or maybe you know, I take that back. I'm putting it on black people again. Mothers, is there just some sort of like inherent, inherent? Like beef between mothers and daughters, and how oh, yeah. soon does the shit start? My daughter is two and a half years old, and I, I swear every time I leave the room or come in here to record or do anything where I'm like with just the two of them for too long, it's it's gonna end in screaming like every motherfucking time. Like, and me oh, yeah, and mother mother daughter beef is real. Me and Elise never had those problems. Like we just we just chill, but moms and Elise. The other day, I'm in here, I'm talking to Rich, and in the background, all I hear, like, my daughter is screaming bloody murder. And I know my wife's not doing anything to her, because that's just what she does. Like, every cry is like, you killing me, you know. And she's screaming bloody murder. I think Tammy's trying to put her down for a nap. And um, and it got to the point where she was screaming so long and probably putting on so much a show that Tammy's laughing. So all I hear is this, like, blood-curdling scream followed by, like, a hysterical laughter. It literally sounded like I was in a Saw movie or something. Like, like some horrible shit was happening in the next room. And uh, I couldn't wait to, you know, finish what I was doing so I can go check on everybody, make sure I didn't walk into, like, a murder scene or something. That's what it sounded like, Rich. I, I just don't understand, like, what is this mother-daughter dynamic? Yeah, it's, the mothers and daughters have, have beef. It goes way back, way, way back. And uh, not for nothing, though. Sometimes shit gets so crazy that it's funny. I yeah. probably would have been laughing at it. I can understand where you coming from, though, but F it. Nah, the, the other day when she came home from uh, from D.C., she spent some time with her grandmother, uh, Tammy's mother and grandfather, and um, she was super spoiled. So it took us, like, two weeks to, like, reprogram her back to what, what life at home is like. And I was trying to give her a bath, 
and she was going off to the point like she wouldn't let me touch her with the rag like she was literally it, you'd have thought i was performing an exorcism or something like every time the water touched her she just like flipped out and yeah and, and it got to the point where i was laughing like i called tammy in the bathroom like watch this and i like put the rag in her face <laughs> <laughs> watch her flip out she was hilarious but uh i guess that's parenting but speaking of daughters <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, we went to see a LFL game, yo. And I, I'm telling you, man, like, I pre- I was prepared to be entertained. I don't think I was prepared to be that entertained. Like, that was... Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think it was going to be that good. That was a dope. And if you don't know what the LFL is, it was formerly the Lingerie Football League. It's now... Is it the Legends of Football League? Yeah, Legends Football Legends League. Legends yeah. Football League. So, it was the league with the, you know, scantily clad women, uh, which was the reason I bought the ticket. Unfortunately, I don't know. Unfortunately, fortunately, I don't know. Unfortunately, uh, between last year and this year, they did some uniform updates, and they no longer wear like the what were they wearing like thongs or like yeah, they wear like thongs, super short shorts, yeah, boy shorts. Short. Yeah, boy. Yeah, like so they no longer wear the thongs. They wear yoga pants now. Um, so it wasn't quite what we were expecting, but maybe that did give us the opportunity to focus more. On the actual well, football game, and I think that was the point to, to to showcase the actual talent and not the assets of the talent. <laughs> but uh, I mean, the assets were still out there. It just wasn't. It wasn't as distracting yeah. as it could have yeah, possibly been. You can focus on the actual plays more, and then when you started doing that, uh, yeah, yeah, we started to notice that there were actual like plays uh, going on, and that was actually more physical. Than I thought it was going to be. Hey, it was uh, super fucking physical. Like they got no yeah. rules. <laughs> they was yeah, clotheslining no. people. And yeah, choke slamming. Choke people. slamming. It was, like, it, was, yeah, it was no rules in that joint. But yeah, we we watched the game between the uh, the Austin Acoustic, the home team. Shout out to the Austin Acoustic and the uh, Atlanta Steam. Yep. Uh, I'll just be the first to say, uh, in terms of what we came to see, there was a clear difference between the Atlanta team and the Austin team. <laughs> I miss home. I miss the East Coast. I really, really do. Shout out to number three, number nine, number six. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know your names. I need to go to the website. But uh, shout out to y'all. I wanted to like stay. I didn't, you know, I needed to get home. Because I think that was the day before the christening or whatever. I needed to get home. But I did kind of want to stay for the meet and greet. Just so I could see what some of these ladies look like in like regular clothes. Cause yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, there was yeah, like, there, there were sights to like see. Just, uh, the mom next door or something. Nah, ain't no mothers look like that. They live next door to me. Son, 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 done, son. <laughs> I still remember number seven. I need to get. Like, can I go back to like the kid days when we put up posters of our favorite players on the wall? Like, would I get in trouble <laughs> if I had like if Tammy Definitely came in here and I had like Atlanta steam posters everywhere? Who's that? Who's that? It's number six. What's her name? I don't know. <laughs> number six number six number six girl six miss six nah but I mean it, it was a really good game it actually came down to a last minute touchdown like and I you know I was surprised like how into it I was I was like standing up and cheering you know home team won Austin won on a, on a last minute touchdown it was uh, yeah. it was super dope super dope so I think yeah, it, was, it, was, it was a good game it, it, to, to put it simply it was an actual football game. Like, it was real football. It was it was a real football game. Yeah. yeah, yeah. To put it simply, it was just like a... It was a professionally played, like, pickup game. Like, But it was it, it was entertaining football. And I think for the cost of the tickets um, and just the atmosphere, it's definitely something I do again. I was surprised at the number of women who was there. Yeah. But then all the women that came to watch the game also came, like, you ain't about to be distracted by these, you know... <laughs> You ain't about to be distracted by what's on the field. You better keep your attention up here. So the women came dressed and impressed. Uh, it was quite the event. Yeah, it was. It was a good game. I'd go. I'd go to another one. It was a. I definitely. It didn't disappoint. Yeah. And, I, and I just. I was thinking about how I. Because we invited. Uh, so Rich and I went, and then we invited another friend of mine, and I invited him like last minute, and I just sent him a text like, "We're going to see an LFL game." You know. So it's like I. I kind of knew. I wasn't giving him like out front all oh, the no, information he didn't, he didn't that he possibly needed. I was giving him enough information to find out the information that he needed, but I wasn't like blatantly yeah, saying yeah. we're going to he, see the lingerie game. 
Because even when even when I spoke to him, I was like, hey, did you get Jared's message? You know, we going to this game. You coming through. Do you know what the LFL is? And he's like, yeah, I got you. I got you. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> no, he, he, he didn't. He, didn't. he had no idea. Yeah. He had no idea. And what was crazy is that uh, his brother went and his brother knew exactly what it was. All right. But he was like, I ain't going to say nothing. He's like, you don't know. I ain't going to say nothing. We just going to go inside. All right, Rich. You know, because I keep it 100 with the people. We all we all family. I'm going to talk freakly. I am mean, freakly. Ooh. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Pause. I'm going to talk freely. Um, was I the only one that showed up and was Jai upset because this Boris Kojo looking motherfucker was there? Dog? <laughs> it's supposed to be like the regular dude hang out and here come. Like, this nigga did look like <laughs> fucking uh, cross between Boris Kojo and fucking Shamar Moore and shit. Nah, I feel uncomfortable Out the whole time. All, like, you know, like, six fucking two and shit. Just LA around. Act that, you know, like, so, yeah. cool dude, cool dude. I just was a little, I immediately became self conscious. I'm like, God damn it. I was yeah, not like, expecting to hang out with Boris Kojo song. today. Like, that, you know, if I had known I'd have wore something different. <laughs> Yeah, so that's how I felt. As soon as I as soon as I pulled up, I was like, "God damn, what a over the wrong motherfucking outfit out here looking all weird and shit." This thing out here modeling. Yeah. So, ladies, we compete too. I just didn't, you know, I thought we was just niggas hanging out. I didn't know. I didn't know we was runway in it. Nobody. I told blame me. Ryan here. Ryan. Ryan ain't. ain't to, all right, so we didn't tell him that it was a yoga pants game, and he didn't tell us he was bringing a male model. All right. It's a I guess we even. It's a push. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's move on to, to uh, some more important shit. So what happened with grandma and the police? Man, listen. So I, I, this is weird. And I'm coming off the heels of talking about Mother's Day, right? So <laughs> uh, grandmother and uh, where is she from? can't remember. I can't remember where she's from. Um, I think it was South Carolina or something like that. But a uh, grandmother um, out there, basically, she's been driving Lyft um, at night and on the weekends, like just to make extra money, support the family, bring extra money home or whatever. You know, you got grandkids, kids, you want to do what you can. So apparently the police felt like uh, she was driving awkwardly. So they pulled her over. They pull her over, they give her a, a ticket and they ask her to sign a ticket. She doesn't agree with it. So she refuses to sign. Which is her right. It even says up there, if you refuse to sign this ticket, you know, you just show up in court. So uh, they got upset and they asked her to get out the car. Uh, so grandma's like, all right, I'll get out. And uh, she's like, you know, you know, uh, to the to the young dude, uh, do you mind helping me? She opens the door, fully cooperating. She reaches her hand out so that they can take her hand and help her step out of her car. Elderly woman, you know, she's like, let me, let me get some help. When I tell you six cops roll up, and yank her out this car like they pulling on her, tugging on her. Y'all need six people to pull a, a four people to pull a sixty five year old woman out of a car. Yeah, I think like, that's that's the first dude. thing that caught me because I haven't really read the article all the way through, and I didn't watch a lot of the video. I think I watched more of like her press conference talking about how how it fucked up her soul. I don't know if you saw that, Jane. Yeah, I saw it. But uh, the my immediate you know reaction when I saw the. A little bit of the video that I saw I was like, why is there so many police? Like, it's one late. Like, there's nobody else in the car. It's one 65 year old woman, and it's like yep. six dudes, like dudes, like not like female officers, big like shit. big cops, dudes. And then uh, they just yelling in her face, screaming profanities, like on her, and all she was just trying to get help to get out of her car. She has an SUV. She needed to step down, like I said, and they. Pull, forcibly pulled this 65 year old elderly woman out of a car because she wouldn't sign a ticket. That's crazy. That's right, crazy. That's right. So I, I want to see where we go because this kind of bleeds into what I want to debate with Cree on uh, for next week. But uh, I do want to see what, what the reaction from our community is going to be to this one. Uh, here we have another interaction with a, a, you know African American female and the police. And uh, now we have, you know, not on, not only was she uh, female, but I, am I not supposed to? I'm not supposed to call him female. I'm sorry. Not only was she a woman, uh, but she was elderly as well. And, and to be treated that way, uh, like I, I haven't heard the response from the police yet. Like, and, and here's like, I guess the argument. Like, why is it that I'm like I need to hear the response from the police? I need to watch the video all the way through. 
You know, it's like I feel more of a need to kind of uh, get all of the, the information. Yeah. And I don't know if I feel more of a need in this situation than I do in other situations, but I don't know. But we're going to hash that out. We're going to hash that out next week. Um, I do want to, Rich, did you hear about, and this is from December of last year, but there's a 20-year-old woman uh, who just had to plead guilty to second-degree manslaughter uh, because she killed her boyfriend while videotaping a stunt for YouTube. What? You, you familiar with this story? I'm trying to think, but I don't I don't recall. You don't recall? Well, guess what, Rich? It's time for Guess the Ethnicity. Yes, sir. Another round of Guess the, guess the Ethnicity. Your uh, favorite new game show where Rich tries to figure out the ethnicity of uh, the person in question with as little information as possible. She killed her boyfriend while filming a stunt for YouTube. Right. So right off back, I'm going to say white, but go ahead. Are right, you going to say white right off back? That's that's your first guess. I'm going to give you a little more information about the story then we'll come back to it. But uh this was a couple who had who was trying to get their internet fame game going. They had a uh, they had a, a couple of these videos out there um, where they, you know, did pranks and stuff on each other. I think one of their pranks was, you know, her feeding him a uh, powder donut that was covered in baby powder instead of powder sugar. Bruh, and, that's too uh, much. <laughs> this is what people are doing these days. I got to get, hold on. We have a guest. You leaving? Really? What's she coming? Am I getting night-night kisses? Okay, night-night kisses. You ever go night-night, nigga? <laughs> night-night, sweetie. I love you. Oh. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> from something sweet to something stupid. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so he did the, the powdered donut thing. So, I mean, and this seems to be a thing. I've seen couples doing this, like this, these super pranks. Like, who can prank the other person the worst? Uh, yeah, but this, this one went wrong. Uh, the prank they were trying to pull off in this particular video was uh, they were trying to prove whether or not a bullet could go through an encyclopedia. And so what this genius decided to do was hold the encyclopedia in front of his chest while uh, his girlfriend fired a gold desert eagle. Time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. Why, why would you even hold the book, though? Why wouldn't you just put the book on the floor or on a shelf or, or in a visor? Why would well, you even hold the book? Apparently, he had tested this before and had, was actually showing... Because he's trying to convince her to shoot him, basically. And uh, I guess he showed her an example of one that he had shot previously where the bullet didn't go all the way through. So I think he was confident that, you know, he could pull this off. He didn't believe... I mean, it's a Desert Eagle, though, but whatever. All right, so with that information, we got 20-year-old, searching for YouTube fame, Gold Desert Eagle. You sticking with your with your original I'm, guess? I'm, I'm, I'm saying white because I don't want to be stereotypical, but every black person I know knows that a Desert Eagle going to go through some shit. <laughs> a Desert Eagle could go through two dudes back to back. Like, a fucking eagle? Nah, bro. Nah. Mm-mm. All right. So Ooh. we got. We gonna come back to it. We gonna come back to it. But uh, you sticking with your right now? You're sticking with your original guess? Yeah, I'm, I'm sticking to it. Fuck oh, it. All right. We'll come back to guess the ethnicity. All right. What else we got on the docket, Rich? Let's get down into some of these uh shit I don't care about, but I feel the need to report. I actually right, care so, about this one though. Yeah, I, I was about to say I care about this one a little bit. Um, and it's up in air because you know what? After thinking about it a little bit, it can go either way. But I'm gonna introduce it first, and we can talk about it. So apparently, Supreme Court has finally legalized uh, sports gambling in another state than Nevada. Yeah. That's right, folks. In the state of New Jersey, you can gamble and bet on sports legally. And what I got from the article is that I mean, yeah, it, I think it was New Jersey that had the suit that you know got this ruling. But really, it says that the federal ban against sports gambling is unconstitutional. So we could yeah, see basically, this. And, and that was that was the grounds that the federal ban against sports uh, betting um, is unconstitutional. And if that's the case and it's overruled, then by that definition, 
um, it should be, you know, voted on by each state individually according, you know, what they want to do, yeah. which is what just happened. If it was, it was found unconstitutional, therefore the, the um, law against that was repealed or amended, making New Jersey state um, able to vote that it's legal in their state. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it sets a crazy precedent. It sets a crazy precedent. And, I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know how I really feel about sports betting. All I know is that... Uh, here in Texas, you know, you can't do it. So I can't do um, like DraftKings and them other, you know, drinks, you know, and I'm a big fantasy football fan. So these are things I definitely have, have wanted to do, but I can't do can't, because can't uh, do it now. I can't do it now because it's, you know, because it's illegal. Um, and also, I mean, I've run into problems just, you know, doing my fantasy football on Yahoo. Well, Yahoo has a setup. You can, you know, collect the money through Yahoo. But because I live in a state. Where sports betting is illegal, you can't. You can't. If Yahoo detects that you're from Texas, they won't allow you to, to participate in things like that. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it, it's it, it affects me on a fantasy level, and I'm like a huge fantasy football fan. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking to see where this is going to go. So I don't care, but I kind of care. And then I, you know, who knows what effect it's going to have on sports in general? Yeah. If and I mean, it's a, sports it's a betting too. becomes a, a, a bigger industry. Yeah. Because I mean, it's already largely done everywhere anyway so it's like on the upside you can do it legally now so people don't have to you know be in murky alleyways and doing be afraid to go to jail um and because it's legal you know the government gets their percentage which means more tax um more tax money going into uh the different states and the help infrastructure and blah 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 blah, blah and the pad politicians pockets and whatever they're going to do with it i'm and glad then, i'm glad you said you mentioned that um uh, not being a murky I think that's going to tie into something we're going to talk about later. So yeah. I got to remember to bring that back up. But yeah, that, that's what we'll make for yeah. a good but conversation. But then uh, the, the downside is that, you know, now now that you can make these bets, you know, who's to say, you know, I won't or a, a person won't bet against themselves or their team uh, to lose uh, and collect that money. Get that Pete Rose going again. So... No, it's, 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 is Pete it's, Rose it's, ever going to make it to the Hall of Fame? Are they ever going to? No. It's not no. ever happen. Not that I care. I'm not, a, I'm not a big baseball fan. I can watch anything in the playoffs. Shout out to the Capitals. We in the Eastern Conference Finals for the first time in 20 years. Got over that hump. Uh, finally beat Sidney Crosby. So, shout out to the Caps. But that's another sport. Like, I don't watch any regular season hockey become playoff time. I'm a fan. So, uh, shout out to the Capitals. Shouts to Boston for beating the dog shit out the uh, Cavaliers the other night. Man, that was my re- that was retarded. All right, so I DVR'd it. Um, shout out to uh, Hoppage and my uh, what you call it, my uh, networked uh, TV tuner that let me uh, hook it up to my NAS and DVR some live TV and games. Uh, that was clutch because I got to watch the game last night. And as I watched it, I was like, are you shitting me? Like, it's like the Cavs had six days off and they was like, fuck it, we needed one more. Let's make it a full week because they, they did not do shit. Like, that game was shit, shit, and crybaby ass LeBron looking for these phony ass, fake ass files. Yeah, fans was but, giving uh, it to him. Yeah. But, all right, well, speaking of this. speaking of someone else that's uh, beating the dog shit out of their opponents right now, uh, I'm gonna keep bigging them up. Royce, uh, Royce's album is crazy. Oh yeah, Royce is gonna get back to back lyric of the week, and this time I'm not even gonna, you know, I think I haven't done lyric of the week justice because I've been trying to uh, spit the lyrics myself, and I might not be the best, you know, represent representative of what these artists were trying to get across. So I'm gonna let Royce speak for himself. Here you go, right now, lyric of the week, Royce to five nine off his new album Book of Ryan. This is from the song Woke. Enjoy. This one's for those who don't know they pops not invincible yet. Trick bitches, hoes that don't know just how nasty they are. They out here wearing the same tongue when they ain't changed from 10 dicks ago yet. Hopefully that's going to... Right, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the reason that got Lyric of the Week for me, because I, re- I usually try to go for something like deep and positive and, and, and dumb shit like that. But I played the new Royce for my wife and we in the car. And that was the first line. That's like from one of the first songs on the album. But that was the first line that caught her when she was like, "That it is chicks out here with the same tongue ring from ten dicks ago." Like that yeah, is that's some nasty uh, shit. And you, 
Oh, man. So now, I, niggas out there in the world, like, if you out there still in the game, you might need to interrogate <laughs> women with tongue rings and make sure things are being sterilized properly for you. I'm just saying. But, bruh, who thinks of that? Who thinks of that? Who thinks of that? I'm so then, glad I'm out the game, bro. And, and and that shit make you think, cause it's like everybody's always like, damn, if these walls could talk, right. motherfucker, if that tongue ring could talk, like nigga, th- the same tongue ring from ten dicks ago. Right. That shit and this wild. goes back to the Chris Rock joint. If she wearing a tongue ring, she'll probably suck your like you you look at <laughs> you look at chicks with a tongue ring like, oh yeah, like no, I got one. And now you got to think like. Ooh, like yeah, she probably will. She probably has, and has she changed that tongue ring? Bruh. That shit is crazy. It's fucking gross. It's, it's, it's crazy, ladies. That's fucking gross. That's crazy. Yeah, do uh, something about what's it. wrong with you? Fuck I need it. to see. Uh-huh. I need to say tongue ring sterilizer on the market. Like I need to see commercials for that shit tomorrow. I need to know that these products exist and y'all are using them. I need to see it in H E B. That is like tongue ring sterilized or something. I need it specifically for tongue rings. You know that I'm shit saying? is crazy. Yeah, specifically but, uh, for tongue ring. <laughs> but uh, Rich, add that to the TWS product lineup. We need we need a tongue ring cleanser. Tongue ring cleanser. Tongue ring cleanser. Antibacterial. Right, so, so speaking of uh, chicks and dicks. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that segues into our next topic. It was at this moment he knew he fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently, uh, Caitlyn Jenner. Is uh, getting married. Dickless chicks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Caitlyn Jenner is marrying 21 year old uh, Sophia Hutchins, who's uh, uh goes to the what? Where did she go? Pepperdine University. Yeah. Uh, so apparently they've been uh, having this long romance. They went on vacation in Mexico to Mexico in 2017, and they've just been uh, having this budding romance. So uh uh. I- I don't, I don't. I don't even know how to phrase this. So basically, Sophia Hutchins is also a transgendered woman. So, Caitlyn Jenner, a 68-year-old man who was transitioned into a woman, is marrying 21-year-old Sophia Hutchins, who was a man who transitioned into a woman. So it's crazy because if you would have asked them both before, they both would have been like, "No, I'm not gay." But now, technically, they are. Right, right. Hey, either way, you gay. Like, if you were. Yeah, it's, it's, it's either it's, two men or two women. Like, there's no way to look at it where you're not attracted to the same gender. Like, if, even if transgender is a gender, then y'all both trans. I, whatever. Shit, See, I don't it, care it, about, it, but feel the need it, to report, it, Rich. It, it, it gets murky <laughs> because he was a he was a man married to a woman who transitioned to a woman who divorced a woman who's now a woman. Who's dating a woman who was a man? So the answer is X. Right. And it's so, <laughs> it was this guy <laughs> shitting on the football field. Like, we just gonna move on. <laughs> this nigga was shitting on the football field. Yeah, now, before the, we the, get to that, before we get to that, <laughs> let's get back to guess the ethnicity. All right. When we uh, left off, the Rick had decided your, your initial guess is Caucasian. This is correct. We're talking about a 20-year-old woman who just pled guilty to second-degree manslaughter, manslaughter for shooting and killing her boyfriend while filming a YouTube stunt. Tried to shoot an encyclopedia while her boyfriend held it in front of his chest. You can guess how it turned out. So let's see. Uh, what additional information would I give you? I'll give uh-huh. you. I, I'll give you two choices on additional information. So this this is another way I'm learning how the rules to this show have to work because I played this game with Tammy last night and she was like I want the last name I was like you can't choose the shit I'm gonna give you the possible new information it's how mm-hmm. it's, it's how it has to work really two options would you like to know the uh, state in which this take took place or would you like to know the penalty she received for pleading guilty. Uh, the penalty. Penalty. All right. So, she did take a plea. And uh, let me get exactly what the penalty is. So, see, she was facing up to 10 years. 
Um, what she eventually got, I believe, was 180 days. She's white. She's white. <laughs> fucking white. She's Which, fucking white. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. It, it gets worse. It gets worse. She got 180 days, pretty much six months. Um, and that is to be served by uh, a 30 day jail sentence for each of the next three years. So, for 30 days each year for the next three years, she has to go to jail and then she can spend the rest of the six the months. Fuck? She got <laughs> options like that? Yeah, uh, options. It's not, even, it's not even consecutively. Like, she don't have to go for 180 days. She goes for 30 serve? days a year for the next three years, which is 90 days, and then can serve the rest of that six-month jail term on house Bruh. arrest. Bro. Now, in addition to the jail time, she also can make no money off of the, the video. No money can be made off of the video. And she is barred from owning a firearm for life. This is some Logan Paul shit. I'm saying white. Um, you still, you're sticking with white. Hell yeah, 180 days, and it's not even consecutive. It's served concurrent years, and you're only serving part of it. Nigga, she's white. <laughs> super, right. super. And and she's got to be a, a super beautiful white taking advantage of that. The pretty claws. The fuck? All right. I'm going to see what she looks like. I got you, bro. I got you. I got you. So uh, I'm going to give you one last chance. We, right now, we still at white. Would you like to know the state in which this took place? Or are you just like, fuck it, she was white? What, what, what state was it? Minnesota. Ben- <laughs> oh, come on now, don't you know? She's a no, she's fucking... <laughs> fuck that, no. Fuck that. All right. She shot, she shot Bobby. Come on. Oh, what's, man, I'm making all kinds of noise. I'm trying to send you this picture, but it ain't going to work out. All right, Rich. Here we go. Mona Lisa Perez. <laughs> <laughs> A 20-year-old Minnesota woman whose quest for internet fame took a tragic turn when she fatally shot her boyfriend, Pedro Ruiz III, uh, while performing a stunt intended for YouTube, has pleaded guilty to second-degree manslaughter. Now, I don't know what exact ethnicity Mona Lisa Perez of how I'm looking, I'm looking at her. She's white. I don't know. Mona Lisa Perez and Pedro Ruiz? Your name is Jared Flanagan. True. Fact. I mean, bro, I'm looking, <laughs> I'm looking right at her. I had to Google this just now. She's white <laughs> all, all the way. White. I don't know if she can get that white and pretty though. She's white. She's white. If she's if she, if she's white, she's just white. That's all. I mean, that's all I'm listen, giving. Her. What, what what was her boyfriend name? He thought she was pretty. Pedro Ruiz the third. I don't know why I gotta adopt the accent when I say it, but. That's see in this picture, see in this picture, she's pretty. She doing the duck lips and all of that, the duck face. I don't like the duck. Hey, ladies, the, can we put an end to the duck on? face? This shit is retarded. Like that's not a normal facial expression. Like there's no, there's no time where you would be making that facial expression. You feel what I'm saying? Like it don't. It's not like it's it's never a candid shot because there's no candid moment where you be making the duck face. Like it's, can we stop? Can we stop? Bro, I need you to look beautiful when you wake up first thing in the morning, not when you prepared and like pursing your lips for no apparent reason. Like, I need the candid shot, and that shit is not candid. Nah, she Stop wanted to kill him. Face. She wanted to kill she him. Wanted, she, she now he, made it. according to the article, he had to beg her to fire the shot. So he like he was showing her the book that he had shot already, you know, kind of like trying to convince her that it was not going to go through. Nah, nah, he ain't had to convince. Her. I'm li- I'm looking at this tweet that she tweeted. Me and Pedro are probably gonna shoot one of the most dangerous videos ever. <laughs> blushy face, blushy face. His idea, not mine. Monkey covering his eyes. Nigga, she wanted Pedro done. She Mr. swapped the bullets out at the end. That's what she did. Mr. Ruiz had been trying to get her to fire fire the gun for a while. Miss Perez told investigators, according to court documents. Yeah, exactly. That's that was her story. We can't hear his side walk, and she killed him. Hey, well, I, I, I'm going to give you that one. I, I don't know if she is not white. I just know her name don't sound white. But again, me being Jerry Flanagan, fuck do I know. Thank you, Rich, for playing another game. Yep. Oh, guess, guess the... I can't even say this shit. Like, we got to make a better name for the show. Guess the ethnicity. Guess. Guess. I got <laughs> to work on my enunciation. 
Anyway, all right, where we at? Where we at? We was gonna get on the uh, oldest mad pooper. This nigga shooting shitting on the football field. Yeah, cause what the fuck? So uh, I guess that apparently somewhere in New Jersey there was a dude taking dumps on the football field. I they was trying to figure out who it was. Uh, they had found him, and it was a superintendent. Super That's crazy. In, superintendent was uh had some shit to get off his chest. <laughs> like why? <laughs> <laughs> Like, but why though? That, I, I don't. I don't even want to know the uh, the motive for like, like what? Yeah, what 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 has to go through your mind? You're like, you know what? I want to do that. Shit on the football field. Like, I don't. I don't even like using public bathrooms. <laughs> like, more or less, just outside. What did he bring toilet paper with him? Or was he just walking around with with peanut Dirty butter drill. in his ass for the rest of the night? Like, uh, you know what? Dirty drill, just Let's like not. That. You know what I'm saying? Between between fucking tongue rings and this shit, I'm disgusted. Keep it moving. Six hundred thousand on the highway. What we got, Rich? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this one, this one was actually uh pretty crazy, and I I couldn't believe it, and it immediately made me feel like I'm in the wrong state. So uh, Indiana, uh, going down uh I-70, um, on the expressway, uh, all of a sudden a Brinks truck. Somehow, some way, the doors weren't secured properly. Doors swung open. Six hundred thousand dollars flies out the back of this armored truck, and uh, of course, people just everywhere just grabbing the money. Commuters stopping their cars all over the place. People running in the street, like gathering up the money. And uh, first of all, I think six hundred thousand dollars. The dude who drove the truck, he had to be fired. Had to be fired. No way, no way he still got a job. Six hundred no But again, but the people who stopped, you know what I'm saying? If the if the cameras they 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 looking at license plates and that's theft. They're gonna get them I mean, folks. Is it, they, now, uh, yeah, now they, like they, they looking to prosecute people. From the article I read, they are looking to prosecute and they checking license plate numbers and they coming to see you. Now if you hop that fence, congratulations, enjoy your payday. Uh but if you stopped your car and picked it up, I don't know, son. Yeah, um, you might want to. You might want to just turn it in. Might want to just be safe. I think they're giving you the opportunity to turn it in. But if you don't, yeah. Turn so they it were. In, they were. They said that they're asking people to uh, uh, return the money. But bro, what? That just. I don't know. And, uh, and this this made me think of this all the time. I'm gonna take it to a serious note for just a quick second, and then we're gonna come back. You know, I do the, the road to recovery series. And I'm, uh, I'm very vested in like you know, uh, recovery and people being able to, uh, you know, figure out they have a problem and get help. Um, I got some news this week that you know really fucked with me. Was, you know, a person that uh, I kind of liked. Uh, you know, I found you know lost their job because of a situation uh, with addiction. And uh, so all I'm gonna say about it is. Uh, Admitting that you need help is a, is a very important step. In the situation that I found out with my coworker, uh, when HR approached her, and this is just a tip, when HR approach approaches you, it's and too it, late. It, it, it's if sort of too late. Number one, do not lie. Like if they approach you about it and they asking, like like you say, it's too late because they already know. Yeah. But don't say yes. Don't say no. Say I have a problem. I need help. And most companies will be almost feel obligated to try to help you. If you can admit to the people that you have a problem and ask for help, the company will, will have to try to help you. Uh, if you lie, if, if you know, if you're not really out, you know, if you're not really being forthcoming or not asking for help or not admitting that you have a problem, um, it could go left for you. But if you know, if you can admit yeah, in quick. that moment uh, that you have a problem and ask for help, a lot of companies. Uh, are obligated to give you that help to try to you know put you on some sort of program maybe test you every so often uh help you find you know some treatment but you know yes if if you get approached by hr and they're asking you like rich said it's too late they already know but say to the people i have a problem and i i need help and uh and most of these companies will try to get you help all right yeah done with that Apple doing dumb shit. What's Apple doing now? I, I'm not an I Apple mean, fan, so you don't have to explain this. One. So technically, you know, they're not doing uh, dumb shit. So what Apple did is basically 
try to help their try to help their uh their people out a little bit more. So basically, you got companies out there like uh, Gray Shift who created the the little black boxes, who hack into phones for the police and for the federal agencies. Like whenever issues go down and they trying to see well who you were contacting, you know, um, you know who you were involved with, who you called, who you told about it, who your accomplices were when you committed crime terrorist acts blah 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 so with the latest uh firmware update from apple uh basically what they did is they put something into the phone firmware to where if the person physically does not log into their phone or device in seven days it automatically disables uh the usb access and uh, basically how that worked what that is for is because you know they'll have somebody in jail just like after the terrorist bombing in boston or whatever um, or the person would be dead, they have somebody in jail, custody, whatever the case may be, but they have their cell phone. You know, the person obviously is not signing in, you know, you so you connect to this black box and you have an infinite time to sort of try to brute force it and, you know, come up with as many passwords as you can via the machine to break into the device. Now, though, you have a time limit. You know, if the person doesn't sign in within... You know five days like that's i mean seven days that's it you know disables usb you can no longer break into that device so it's, it's it's a gift and a curse on one hand it's like well shit, i'm glad i don't want to lose my phone you know and somebody out there try to you know re re uh sell it wipe it do whatever because i know how to wipe them um but then at the same time it's like under those special circumstances you would want the police to get access to it but you know do you compromise you know the security and the rights of some, I mean, the rights of all for the, for the some, like, you know what I mean? That's kind of crazy. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm one of them people that, you know, when I install an app and they be asking for permissions and shit, I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Say no. Um, like, you can, you can have access to whatever. Like, I'm just, I don't know. If, if they're going to get it, they're going to get it. You know, like I said, I used to work for, uh, I did contracts for Homeland Security. And I remember having conversations with network guys and, for Homeland Security uh, and it's extremely locked down network but the understanding was you know if it's got access to the internet it's hackable you know we're gonna Pretty make much. it we're gonna make it as hard as possible you know but I've even heard people you know use the phrase uh, if you're good enough to get in then you deserve to see what you see like that I mean I've heard that one yeah. yeah I mean that's just that's just reality like there's probably even this block I'm not sure is undefeatable like you know is that a word? Undefeatable? <laughs> Invincible. Yeah. Like, you know, somebody going to, you know, it's going to go back and forth. You block something, somebody figure out a way around it. So you, find, you figure out a better way to block it. They figure out a better way to get around it. So I, I'm just, I probably need to care, but I don't. And that's all I have to say about that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this, this last one before we go. Let's uh, get into about this. Mar- um, about Miranda. So. I haven't read much into it. Like I, I told you earlier, when I first saw it, I just I shied away because it's like, really, Miranda? You know, used to be the homie, but now I don't know. But curious to see what you think about it. One, uh, fuck Sex in the City. Hate that show. Um, <laughs> Should have never been made. Uh, and two, I, 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 I see what she was trying to do, and I think my my worry is that we get caught up in semantics. So basically, uh, Miranda, I don't even, I, I should stop calling her Miranda and figure out her actual <laughs> name. But, Cynthia Nixon. Whatever. <laughs> but uh, uh, where, you know where she's, she's running for what, mayor or governor? What is it? New York uh, gubernatorial candidate. Okay, so she's running for governor of New York. And um, she's talking about, you know, the whole topic of legalizing weed. And so what she was trying to say was that uh, if we legalize it, we need to what what because what happens is we legalize we and then the people that are in position to take advantage of this you know of this new market are not the people who've been prosecuted for years for already being in the market mm-hmm. so she was like you know um, if we legalize it we need to put policies in place to give you know minorities or some of these underprivileged people uh, first dibs on licenses and things to try to help them get a head start uh in the industry since they've you know they've had years of like i said being persecuted and 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 families and communities decimated because of uh you know people selling and being in the industry illegally 
And then she fucked up because she used the word exactly. reparations. But here's the thing. The word reparations has nothing to do with slavery. The word reparations just means like a payment or, you know, or some sort of way to make up for a wrongdoing. And in that sense, what she said makes perfect sense. But, but, you know, in America, the word reparations is hey, emotionally on, tied, to emotionally tied to slavery. So the idea that somehow giving us frontline access to the weed industry is making up for slavery caught people the wrong, you know, caught people yeah. the wrong way. Exactly. And so I think I, I, you know, on one end, I know, I think I feel like I know what she was trying to say, and she chose the wrong word. Uh, and I don't know if her choosing the wrong word, maybe I should. Like, she's not sensitive enough to what what is actually happening in this country. Maybe she doesn't understand enough about what actually actually happened in this country, or she would have chosen a different word. Because I'm sure that was a written speech. You know, she didn't say that shit on the fly. Yeah, she knew she you was see what you're doing, right? Yeah, you see what you're doing. What am I doing? Am I skating? No, you're not skating. But exactly what you were saying. I'm coming up with uh, rationalizations for something that she didn't even like. She's not you. She's not saying that. Right. Kanye in this situation. I'm Kanye in the shit out this. This is her first offense. Kanye been fucked up for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> this is her first offense. I just, I just hate when we get caught up in the meaning of a word. Like this is a semantic thing, and I, I'd hate to see somebody that I so think. So. I hate to see somebody that I think was trying to say something good. Get, I mean, get beat to shit like this because they choice. chose the wrong word. Cho- exactly, choice is a word. Nigga, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> don't use the Chewbacca Please. defense, nigga. Don't use the Chewbacca I'm defense. I'm just saying. Nigga, Chewbacca was a Wookie. It doesn't make any sense. None of this makes it. Now you know. Don't use the Chewbacca defense on me. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm just. And, and, but then what I wanted to say in relation to uh, what we talked about earlier with the sports gambling is that. Yeah, not only do we need to be looking at how minorities and, uh, and and the communities that have been persecuted for years in this industry can get, you know, some front row, front line access to this new budding industry. But then we need to make the legalization. Uh, what is the word I'm looking for? It needs, it needs to be backdated and we need to be looking at releasing nonviolent offenders. Like, yeah. not just giving people... Uh, a front row access to the new world but the people that have suffered because you know they got crazy jail sentences for participating in something that's now going to be legal if they if they if it wasn't a violent offense let them out i agree and i think maybe the same thing with the sports betting if it's dudes you know dudes that was in the murky alleys you know making a living off something that you now gonna make legal if they ain't hurt nobody you let them out I'm jailing these men, you You're going to make something legal all of a sudden, but then, then they didn't commit a crime. Go back True. to make that shit retroactive. But yeah, all right. So maybe I, I'm Kanye the fuck out of this Miranda situation. I feel for her. Maybe uh, it's me coming to the defense of a woman. Maybe it's uh, the fact that I don't think she's crazy. And I think Kanye is, is <laughs> bat shit. Bat nuts. shit off the fucking boxes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe. Maybe, but yeah, I feel you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm rationalizing for. Her. She hasn't said this. She hasn't come out with this uh, excuse yet that I know of. This is just me finding a way that it's not as bad as everybody says it is. Everybody so wants to be. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. You caught me. You caught me. Fuck it though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in this show, I don't feel like it's wrong to be a hypocrite. I think it's wrong to be a hypocrite and not admit that you're a hypocrite. Too sure. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm doing it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I own my hypocrisy. I own my hypocrisy. I, I am who I say I am. Flan out. Makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> Mic drop. But yeah, I don't know. We like an hour in. Do we want to hit any of these... These stragglers, because next week is going down, my nigga. <laughs> Pause. Pause. Uh, no, I think we, I think we're pretty good. I'm gonna have to listen to these three stacks uh, tracks before I talk about it, because I'm historically a fan of three stacks, 
but I gotta, I gotta, I gotta give it some play. I gotta give it some play. I was excited until you said seventeen minutes. Seventeen, know. yeah, it said new track seventeen minutes. I was like, ooh, no. I, I and I was reading it as I was going to press play, and then I was like, nah. All right, All right here's here's a quick one before we before we dip out. Pause. Um, three stacks, right? We put three stacks. Most people will put him in their top ten or, or up there. He's upper echelon. He's elite level, right? Mm-hmm. Now, I heard somebody make the argument that anybody could be elite level if they only put out a verse a year. If you have all year to write a verse, it better be dope. It better be dope the as best. fuck. It better be the best <laughs> fucking verse. And and Three Stacks has been on that pace for like the last, I want to say three, four years. Like we get like one, two tracks, maybe a feature, maybe just a verse, not even three verses, but just a feature. He shows up on something. And he he fucks it up every time he shows up on something, but is that a valid argument that, nah, that I don't he might think be a little inflated because he's not he, his nah. his, his production isn't at the same level? I don't think he's actually taking the year to like create it. I feel like he's bullshitting for eight months, twelve months, and then he decides to do a project. And once he starts to do the project, he focuses on it, and then that's when the magic happens. I don't feel like he's preemptively like, oh, I'm about to kill it. And, you know, uh, picks out uh, one like phrase a month for the 12 months to create a whole sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I, but yeah, I mean, you know, like, I think about that and I'm not I'm not in any way putting myself on the level of any of these elite rappers or, you know, or Andre. But it's like, uh, I think I'm pretty good, but I know I can't do what Royce does. Like, I can give you a hot 16 here, you know, a quick freestyle there maybe a song every once in a while um, I doubt I had a talent or the attention span or the I don't know the the, the tenacity or the stick to to do that consistently for a, a 12 song album and then to do that and then to produce albums or mixtapes twice a year I definitely feel like I you know I definitely feel like you give me a track you give me an appearance I'm going to give you a nice 16. I'm going to give you a solid 16 that competes, you know, with most industry dudes right now. But yeah. could I do it for an album? I don't think so. So I don't know. I, don't I know. mean, I, I, I still think he's up there. Three Stacks still got it. Yeah, I mean, I think he's up there. But I, I think it's a valid argument, though. I, some, I, that was just the first time I heard somebody put it that yeah. way. Like, if you only had to do, like, one verse a year. Should you know? Shouldn't every one, every verse you do be elite level every time? Uh, yeah, I can, I can see the rationale in that. I can see the rationale. I can see the rationale. I just want to throw that out there. We just about an hour. I think we can wrap it up. Wrap it up, B. Yeah. You already know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you for rocking with us. Uh, major, major projects in the works uh, for the end of the year. Um. Man, I know I I normally do a lot, you know, about people not liking and sharing or, or or posting stuff, trying to get people to like and share. Let me just take a moment this time to uh, appreciate the people who are listening, uh, who do share without me asking. Uh, you know, I noticed it this weekend. Like I really wasn't that active uh, on social media or promoting any uh, of the content that we had out there, um, and they were just people who support the show because they like what we do. That kind of took up the mantle for me. Like we were still, you know, getting our impressions on Twitter. We were still getting our plays on SoundCloud, and I really wasn't doing much. So uh, I do appreciate it. I do see everybody out there that that rock with us, and uh, and thank you uh, so much, so so much. Definitely, definitely, it's much appreciated yeah, much as appreciated. always. But yeah, but we got a lot more content coming um, in all ways, shapes, forms, and fashions. I don't. That sounded pause. I feel like I need to say pause <laughs> for some reason now. Anyway, uh, until we speak again, everybody out there, be the light and be safe. Peace. Peace.